Hi everybody, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Hope you're doing well today and enjoying a summer day if you're in the Western Hemisphere or maybe a cool evening in Australia or the other parts of the world that are in the middle of winter. But right now, today's a sunny day. The sun is shining into my room and it feels like summer. Summer is, um, you know, it's one of my favorite seasons for lots of reasons because um, there's more, um, you know, just a, a sense of joyfulness about life. The sunshine brings out this positivity and glow in people. And you can see the light shining behind me. It's just, I'm surrounded by light, which is a great thing. But um, it's also the time of the year when uh, grandchildren are off school and there's lots more activities, um, you know, just going on in the world. But also with this pandemic that we're all facing right now, there's some limitations and restrictions and we're just not able to see our families in the same way that we might have in a normal summer, <laughs> whatever that might be. But um, I wanted to share with you an article written by one of our bloggers, Kathleen Real. And Kathleen wrote this article about her experience as a grandmother during a summer where her children were under pressure because, well, the, the, the pandemic. And they called her up one day and said, you know, mom, can we come to your house? You live in the country. We would like to get out of the city where we live and bring our kids with us. Would that be okay? <laughs> And she said, well, yes, of course. And I mean, every grandmother wants to be able to do that. Some of us, of course, don't have a, the space to accommodate this, but this article is really about an attitude. It's an attitude to dealing with a tough situation and how they hosted this grandma, grandpa, um, you know, camp uh, when their grandchildren all came to visit during the summer. This was, this is actually last summer, but um, here we are, another year, another, another, challenge in front of us. But anyway, the kids all arrived, everybody did their COVID tests, of course, and they showed up and the fun began. Now the children um, came from New York City and other parts of the world where there was, you know, there's not this sort of country atmosphere. Being at grandma's house out in the open air was a, a whole new experience. Now, before I go any further, a lot of you are watching this and thinking, well, we don't have a big house. We don't have a big garden. We don't have the country retreat that Kathleen is talking about. But it's more about how to make do, how to make do in situations where things are not perfect and we can just add some creativity and, you know, just make things work. Now, um, she, so the, the story I'm going to tell and the, and the examples that she gives things to do during this hosting of the grandma, grandpa camp may not work for you, but maybe one or two ideas will spark an idea and spark some enthusiasm. We've got to, we've honestly got to do the best we can, haven't we? We just can't be worrying about, well, we don't have a place to put a campfire or we don't have the space to do a, a racing, you know, game, but we can make it work. So everybody, of course, when they arrived was given tasks to do. It was important that everybody felt like they were part of the family. So they all had little jobs that they had to do, even the children. And the um, meals were, were shared, people prepared the meals together. So I think the way that Kathleen and her husband put this together was in a very, like, um, I don't know, a sensible way, where it wasn't just a visitor, you know, coming in and, you know, leaning on grandma, grandpa to do all the work. Everybody was involved. Everyone shared cooking the meals, cleaning up, and everything was, um, you know, given, uh, a, a sort of, a, everybody had a responsibility. So everything from gathering the firewood to make the campfire at night, which I'll talk about in a second, but um, to you know just simply sweeping up, keeping, you know, being responsible for your own washing and that kind of thing. So it was really a, a shared experience. So what were some of the things that they did? And there's like 42 things in this, uh, which I'm going to tell you about in just a second. Okay, so these are the 41 things that uh, Kathleen and her husband did to occupy and entertain their families, that mostly kids, grandkids, when they were visiting uh, during the summer months. Uh, and I, I love, so many of these are so evocative, but first of all, gathering wood for the fire pit to toast marshmallows and some might make, make s'mores. Running through water spray. Okay, whether you have a garden or not, I actually don't have a garden, but I have a water, I have a little hose, and my grandson and I have had lots of fun this summer just spraying water. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't need to be a big farm or a big, big area, so spraying water. Yes, you have to have towels, you have to be prepared for a mess, but it's just so much fun on a hot day. Um, building castles, roads and moats in a big sandbox. It could be a small sandbox. Swimming in a pool, swimming in a refreshing pool. It could be a bucket, it could be a proper pool, but you know, just getting in the water and splashing around is such a great summer activity. Drawing colorful rainbows and designs with sidewalk chalk. 
Now, this is something that I only just discovered really when I came to Europe because I never used side chalk before, but you know, it washes away so you can just, just draw pictures. It's big, thick, um, you know, thick uh, chalk. It's really, really good. It's a lot of fun. Baking and eating yummy cookies. Easy peasy. <laughs> well, I say that I'm not a great cook, but uh, making cookies and making shapes, you know, having shaped cookies um, that kids just love to do. It's really a fun exercise. Picking lettuce from the garden, picking any food from a garden or going to a bio farm or going to a little market that has real, you know, I say real, but fresh vegetables and fruits. Um, laughing in the bathtub bubbles or just bubbles in general. I have I have them actually all over my house. Bubbles are my friend. I love them. So bubbles are great with kids. They just adore them and they make really nice pictures. <laughs> uh, what a colorful wooden croquet balls or any kind of balls. I used to get like, um, you know, milk cartons and just line them up like in a bowling alley and then just roll the ball towards them in a small space and or in a big space. But speeding scooters down the driveway. Scooters or bikes are always great fun. Dangling from a tree rope swing. Do you remember that when you were a kid? Or maybe maybe you don't, but I certainly do. You know, just tying a piece of rope to a tree and, and swinging, usually into water I, when I was in, living in Canada, but um, yeah, rope swings. Um, trying to catch fireflies at dusk. Fireflies are just magical and if you get a jar and you can try to catch a couple of them and put them in a jar just for a minute and just watch them in the darkness sparkling, it's just a beautiful thing. Um, reading favorite books, snuggling, and I can, you know, I can imagine Kathleen doing this with her grandchildren, with, with the whole family. Book reading, storytelling is such a wonderful summer pastime. Chasing the dog around the garden <laughs> and the fence yard, she says. Um, ha ha making homemade waffles. Now, I had, don't have a waffle machine, but my daughter-in-law does. And I've never, I, honestly, I never really enjoyed waffles until I had them made from scratch, like a, pink, like a batter. And then you put, um, well, fruit normally, fruit and whipped cream. But I also put um, cheese, like a, a cheese spread on them. And they were really good too. So waffles are a great thing to make or pancakes. Um, packing a picnic lunch, you know, with colorful tablecloth and just going out, could be a towel, could be whatever, and just, but making a picnic out of your food. I think that's always a fun thing to do too. Um, wearing, walking masked up in the neighborhood. I think they mean with, with pandemic masks, with COVID masks, but you could maybe put other masks on too for kids and just walk around the neighborhood. Notice the new plants that are growing. Notice the new um, things that people are putting in their garden, in their on their lawn, how the leaves are changing, what flowers are in blossom, just walking around the neighborhood. Um, building forts with sheets. <laughs> That's always a good thing to do. I love that. I'm going to put my little, I've got a little glowy light here that helps my, the colors on my video. It's uh I've take, I'm not using the very hot lights because they're so hot, but I'm doing this here. Maybe that will help a little bit, yeah. Um, and the glow is coming in. It's a summer, summer day here. But anyway, uh, sheets and, and making forts, that's always a good idea. Um, making homemade popsicles. I just did something really fun with popsicles. We actually got watermelon and cut them into, into little uh, circles and put this, uh, like a popsicle stick on them, froze them. And you can do that with any fruit but frozen fruit or frozen popsicles, that's a really, really cool idea. Um, another thing is listening for bird songs, learning about nature, that's such a fun thing to do. Um, just being out in the outdoors. Basically what she said is everything became an adventure. It didn't matter what they did, it was an adventure. And I think that children just like adventures. You can say the silliest things like, let's just do this. <laughs> and it becomes an adventure. And I guess the point that I, that I even bothered recording this is, is that you don't have to have even grandchildren in your life. Just be like a child. You know, look at the summer as an opportunity to have adventures, tell stories, um, you know, just, just to be young, and vibrant and carefree again goodness knows we have not been carefree for over a year now and it's really hard to find joy in in our life when we're not able to just be silly and playful um they're planning for next year of course and so maybe this is something that you can think about for 22 am i, am I really saying that um you know 22 why not um family can get together in all different kinds of ways during this time. It's not always possible to meet, you know, in person. So you might have to do some of this virtually. I often talk on FaceTime with my grandkids with bubbles and, you know, stories and books and pictures. And um, yeah, we just do the best we can, don't we? We just make the best 
of this crazy situation. So what have been some of your most cherished summer um, times with family members online or, or in person? Or maybe as a child yourself, you can remember, what are some of your cherished summer memories? I'm trying to remember some of mine. I can remember uh, the milkman bringing orange juice bottles and we used to dip rhubarb in the orange juice and, and eat it. And picking blueberries was one of my favorite things when I was a little girl and because we had blue blueberry fields all by the railway tracks near our house. But you know, there's so many great summer memories, um, beach memories, playing memories, swimming memories. Uh, I'd love you to share. Let's make the most of this little precious time we have where the weather's gorgeous. I know it's super hot in a lot of places and that's not, not a good thing, but hey, we take what we get and we do our best. We do our best to cope. We're good at it. Women over 60 are good at this. <laughs> we had lots of practice. Anyway, take very good care of yourselves, everybody. Have a wonderful sunny day, summer, summer sunny day. I'm surprised saying that three times, but uh, know that you're in our hearts and thinking about you. Just take good care. Bye-bye for now.